get started. Well, good morning again to uh, everyone. It's great to see everyone today. Uh, jutro, danas, uh, super da se uh, if you have a Bible with you, uh, we're going to be in Acts chapter 8 in the New Testament and also Isaiah 53 in the Old Testament. Uh, če imate Biblijo s sabo, bomo uh, si pogledali uh, apostol, apostol, apostolska dela in pa tudi uh, Izaijo v Stari Zavezi. So for about three months we have been looking at pictures of Jesus in the Old Testament. Uh, že približno tri mesece gledamo te prispodobe Jezusa iz Starega, iz Stare Zaveze. And so the point of that was to illustrate that the Bible is really one story and it's told in a multitude of pictures and prophecies. S tem želimo pokazati, da je Biblija v bistvu vse ena zgodba, ki je razložena v več prispodobah in pa prerogbah. And that one story is God's plan to bring sinners uh, to himself. In ta zgodba je ta, da želi Bog pripeljati grešnike k sebi. And uh, I hope we've seen many of these pictures already very clearly. In upam, da smo videli te, veliko teh slik, teh prispodob, dost jasno do zdaj že. So today I'm going to do something a little bit different <coughs> and show you the work of one of the early followers of Jesus. Spravo, danes pa želimo uh, narediti nekaj drugačnega in pa pokazati tudi eno zgodbo enega od zgodnih sledilcev Jezusa. And this story is going to, um, Philip is going to do the very same thing that we've been attempting to do uh, each and every week here, and that is link Jesus with the Old Testament. In to je uh, zgodba o Filipu, uh, ki s katerim pa želimo vzpostaviti povezavo z Jezusom iz prerogbo, iz Stare Zaveze. So I know we're talking about the prophecies and pictures of Jesus in the Old Testament, but we have to start in the New Testament today to see this. Vem, da govorimo o teh prispodobah iz, o Jezusu iz Stare Zaveze, ampak danes gremo pa v Novo Zavezo, da bomo videli današnjo zgodbo. So uh, in Acts chapter 8, we're going to find the story of God using Philip to make a connection with Jesus to an Old Testament prophecy. Torej, um, pogledali se bomo apostolska dela v osmo poglave, kjer bomo najdeli zgodbo o uh, Filipu, uh, s katerim pač Bog vzpostavi, uh, vzpost, uh, povezava v stari zavezi. So, just a little brief background on Philip here. We're first introduced to Philip in Acts chapter 6 when he and six others who were faithful men were chosen to serve the church in Jerusalem. S Filipom se najprej že seznanemo v teh apostolskih delih v šestem poglavju, ko bi skupaj s šestimi in drugimi zvestimi možmi, ki so bili izbrani za služnje crkvi v Jeruzalemu. And these seven men were not part of the Gospel 12 apostles. In teh sedem mož ni bilo uh, 12 apostolov, ki jih tudi spoznamo. They were chosen because they had a good reputation and they had a heart to serve people. Teh uh, sedem mož je bilo izbranih zato, ker so imeli uh, dobro gled in pa srce, da bi služili ljudjem. So again, going to be reading in Acts chapter 8 how God led Philip to make a real difference in someone else's life. Torej prebralci bomo apostolska dela, osmo poglavje, kjer bomo izvedeli, kako je Bog vodil Filipa, da je resnično spremenil življenje nekomu. Ok, so this is a pretty long portion of scripture, so just bear with me, going to read uh, Acts chapter 8, verses 26 to 40. Says, now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south along the road which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza, which is desert. So he arose and went. Behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority, under Candace the queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of all her treasury and had come to Jerusalem to worship, was returning. And sitting in his chariot, he was reading... Isaiah the prophet. Then the Spirit said to Philip, 
Go near and come along beside this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, Do you understand what you're reading? And he said, How can I unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. The place in the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, his justice was taken away, and who will declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. Verse 34. So the eunuch answered Philip and said, I ask you, of whom does the prophet say this? Of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and beginning at the scripture, preached Jesus to him. Now as they went down the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What hinders me or stops me from being baptized? Verse 37, Then Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So he commanded the chariot to stand still, and both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and he baptized him. Now when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away, so that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Azotus, and passing through he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. Берем мишкан дальше от Ломек, осмо поглави апостолска дела от 16 до 14 гаверза, кер пише Англа господов па е говорил Филипу и дел, устани им поди против поднево на цеста, ки пели из Иерусалема доли в газо, она е пуста. И устани те родиде, и глед, мож из Етиопия, коморник и областник Кандаке, хрлица етиопске, ки била на досеме и ними заклади, и не пришел молит v Jeruzalem, se vraša domov in sedečno v vozu svojem prebira preroka Izaija. Duh preče Filipu. Pristopi in pridruži se temu vozu. Filip pa priteče in ga sliši, da bere preroka Izaija, te reče, ali pa umaš, kar bereš? On pa reče, kako bi nekaj mogel, če me kdo ne napoti? In zaprosi Filipa na vstopi in sedeh njemu. Vrsta pisma, ki jo je bral, pa je bila ta. Pelje se, kakor ovce na klanje in kakor jagne moči pred strišcem svojem, tako nadpre ust svojih. V poniženju njegovem se je preklicala svatba njegova. A rod njegov kdo razloži, kajti življenje njegova se vzame od zemlje. Spregovori pa komornik in reče, prosim te, o kom govori ta prerok? O sebi ali o kom drugem? Filip pa odpre usta in začenši od tega pisma mu oznani blagovesti o Jezusu. Ko se pa tako pelete po cesti, pridete k vodi in komornik reče, glej voda, kaj brani, da bi bil hrščen? Filip pa reče, če veruješ iz vsega srca, smeš. In odgovori in reče, verujem, da je Jezus Hristus, Sin Boži. In odkaže ustaviti voz in oba stopita v vodo. Filip in komornik in ga krsti. Ko pa stopita z vode, vzame duh gospodo Filipa in ni ga več videl komornik, zakaj nadljeval je vesel svojo pot. A Filip se je znašal v Azotu in gredo zdalje je oznanjeval evangelju vsem mestom, dokter ne prišel Cezarejo. There is so much to see in these verses that we just read. V teh verzih, ki smo jih prebrali, je zelo veliko zavideti. And I'm not going to go into depth with most of these points, but there's some things that I just can't pass without talking about them. Ne bomo šli v glubino vsega, kar smo prebrali, ampak So pa nekatere stvari, mimo katerih ne moramo. So the first thing that I see here is Philip's obedience to follow God's instruction. V prvem stvar, ki jo vidimo, je Filipova poslušnost, da sledi Božjem navodilom. He went where he was told and he did what he was told. Šel je, kamor mu je bilo naročeno, da gre in naredil je, kar mu je bilo naročeno, da naredi. The second thing to see here is this Ethiopian man was obviously religious because he, it tells us he came to worship. Druga stvar, ki jo vidimo, je ta etiopijac, ki je očitno veren, ker on je, ker piše, da je šel k molitvi. And he had sacrificed a significant amount of money to buy his own scroll of the prophet Isaiah. In ta etiopijac je žrtvoval, je plačal 
velik kup denarja, da si je kupil zvitek preroka Izaije. And I can just picture that he was so excited that he had already started reading it as he was traveling back. In očitno je bil tako vznemiren, ko ga je kupil, da ga je že začel brati že na poti nazaj domov. I can I can picture him wanting to know about this God of the Jews. Predstavljam si ga, da hoče izvedeti o Bogu judov. And in spite of the fact that he was religious and and eager to learn, he didn't understand what he was reading. Ampak kljub temu, da je bil veren, pa da se je hotel učiti, ni razumel, kaj bere. But I think here, this is a perfect illustration of how God deals with people who want to know more about Him. In mislim, da je to popolna ilustracija, kako Bog ravna z ljudmi, ki si želijo naučiti o njemu. And I also think it answers the questions that people ask about those maybe who have never heard about Jesus. In to mogoče tudi odgovori na vprašanje, kako Bog ravna z ljudmi, ki mogoče še niste slišali za Jezusa. And that is, God has revealed enough about Himself by just the things that are around us, so that anybody who wants to have perfect knowledge of God, He is going to send someone to them to help them. Bog je v sebi razdel dovolj, da je vsakmo, ki želi imeti popolno spoznanje o Bogu, bo poslal nekoga, ki mu bo lahko pomagal. Because this is exactly what we're seeing right here. Ker točno to vidimo tukaj. Filip asked the Ethiopian eunuch, do you understand what you're reading? Filip je vprašal etopskega eunucha, a razumeš, kaj bereš? And of course his response is, how can I without someone to guide me? In seveda je bil odgovor, kako pa ne razumem brez nekoga, ki me bo vodil. So the Ethiopian eunuch invites Filip to join him in his chariot as he's going on his journey. In zato je ta etiopski onuh povabo Filipa, ne se mu pridružil v tem njegovem vozu, s katerim se je vozil. Now, I love this part. The place where the eunuch just happened to be reading was Isaiah 53. In všešno mi je, ker ta mesto, kjer bere onuh, je Izaija 53. poglavje. Now, I don't want you to miss this part at all. A scroll is much different than a book like we have today. Nočem, da bi to zamodil, ker zvitek je drugačen kot je knjiga, ki jih imamo danes. So with the scroll, you have to roll it out to get to the next page, and you go on and on. Če imaš zvitek, ga moraš zvijati, da priješ do naslednje strani in zvijati naprej in naprej. So I think it's safe to assume that he didn't roll it over to Isaiah 53, that he probably started at the first chapter and went to the second chapter and he kept rolling until now he's arrived at Isaiah 53. In verjetno lahko predvidevamo, da ni slučajno pač zarolo tega zvitka na 53. poglavje, ampak je bral od prvega poglavja, pa bral drugo poglavje in je potem prišel do 53. poglavja. And there's only 66 chapters in Isaiah. So God knew the exact timing of when Philip needed to be at a certain place at a certain time to meet a certain person who needed exactly what Philip could show him about what he was reading. Ta knjiga o Izaiji oziroma ima skupno 66 poglavi. Tako da je Bog je točno vedel kdaj točno, kje točno se more Filip pojaviti, da se bo srečil s tem človekom, ki je rabil točno to, kakor mu je Filip pač lahko pomagal. And I think this part is so awesome. Verse 35 tells us that Filip began exactly where this eunuch was reading to show him who he was talking about. In zanimivo je to, da 35 vers Natančno pove, da je Filip pobegnil ravno z tega mesta, kjer je bral evnuh, da bi mu pokazal, da prerok govori o pač tej osebi. He didn't say, forget what you've just read, I've got something else to tell you. In Filip ni rekel, pozabi to, kaj beraš, jaz ti imam nekaj drugega zapovedati. 
No, he used exactly what God, the situation that God had provided to prove that who this prophet was talking about was this man named Jesus. Не, он упорабо точно то Божья информация, о ком говори та пророкба, и говори о человеку, который именует Иисус. This Jesus who had only recently been crucified, buried, and had risen again. У тем Иисус, о ком был равно так рад крижан, покопан и не стал потом от мертвых. Now keep in mind here that Isaiah had written this book of his 750 years before uh, all these events with Jesus happened. Видот морма да е Изаија написал своја згодба 750 лет преди што се тие догодки згодили. And it happened exactly like Isaiah said it would happen. Згодило па се точно тако кога е Изаија наповедал да се возгодила. So now here is where we arrive in the reading of Isaiah chapter 53. And the, the portion that the eunuch had mentioned that we read there in Acts chapter 8 was just a portion of Isaiah 53. We're going to read the whole um, chapter of Isaiah 53. <laughs> And the reason I want to read the whole chapter is because every bit of it relates to Jesus and his sacrifice for us. So we're not going to read it all <coughs> at one time. We'll take it bit by bit and then talk about how Jesus fulfills every one of these prophecies. So I'm going to begin reading Isaiah 53 verse 1. It says, Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness and when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him, or we didn't value him. Кдо е верва ознанилно нашему и кому се е разделила рама Господова, кај ти он је зрасао како младика пред ним и како коронина је сухе земље. Ни имеју подобе не лепоте, и ко смо га видели, ни имеју мичне зунанјости да би си га били желели. Заничеван је бил импрезиран мед можбо лечин и нескушно трпљенју, и како човек пред катерин скрива је обличе је бил заничеван и нич га нисмо числали, озирамо ценили. So in spite of what we have seen in the Renaissance paintings of Jesus with his very fair complexion and his long flowing hair looking like a beautiful person, that really is not a good representation of what Jesus looked like. Kljub temu, kar smo videli na starih renesančnih slikah, kjer je Jezus upodobljen, zelo lep, pa z dolgimi lesmi, človek pa on ga vide za Jezus vredno ni tako zgledal. Says he was not a picture perfect looking guy. Piše da ni bil človek popolnega videza. And it also clearly says that he would be despised and rejected by men which is exactly what happened to Jesus. Jasno se piše da je bil zaničevan in zavržen kar je točno to kar se je zgodilo Jezusu. In John chapter 1 verse 11 it says he came to his own people and his own people did not receive him. U Janozovom evangeliju prvo poglavlje 11 vers piše prišao ih svojim i njegovi ga nisu sprejeli. He was rejected by the religious leaders of his day and ultimately by the people who cried out for his execution, his crucifixion. Jezusa so zavrnili 
virski voditelji njegovega časa in kar še bolj pomembno, zavrnili so ga ljudje, ki so opili, da bi ga križali. Now listen in verses 4 and 5 from Isaiah 53. It says, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Zaprav beremo naprej v četrtim, peti versi z 53. poglavja, ki piše, Zares on je nosil bolezni naše in si je naložil bolečine naše, Mi pa smo ga šteli za kaznega, ki ga je Bog udaril in ponižal. A on je bil ranjen zaradi naših prestopkov, je bil potrt zaradi naših krivic. Kazen ga je zadela zaradi našega miru in rane njegove so bile nam v ozdravljenje. Vse, skozi kar je šel Jezus, skozi to je šel zaradi nas. I'm going to read 2 Corinthians 5.21 and it says this. But God made Jesus to be sin for us, who knew no sin, so that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him or through Him. Torej, v drugem pismu Korinčanom, pet poglavi 21. vers, piše, kajti Bog je naredil Jezusa za greh za nas, ki nismo poznali greha, da bi mi po njem postali Bože pravičnost. So this prophecy is also fulfilled in the New Testament when Jesus is beaten before his crucifixion. In ta prerogba se izpolni tudi v novi zavezi, ko je Jezus še pred križanjem pretepen. So in Matthew chapter 27 verse 26 it says, Then he, talking about Pilate, released Barabbas for them. But after having Jesus beaten, he handed him over to be crucified. To pravi, beremo v Matejevem evangeliju, 27. poglavi, 26. vers, kjer piše, potem jim je, se pravi, ponci Pilat, izpustil Baraba, ko pa je Jezusa pretepel, ga je izročil, da bi ga križali. Again, Jezus, his wounds and his bruises were for our sins, so that we could be forgiven and have eternal life with God. Torej, Jezusove rane pretepel, so bile pač za naše grehe, da bi nam bilo odpoščeno in da bi mi imeli na koncu tega pač večno življenje. So now verse 6 from Isaiah 53. It says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord, once again, has laid on him the iniquity of all of us. In tako naprej, šesti vers v 53. poglavju Izaije piše Mi vsi smo tavili kakor ovce, obrnili smo se vsak na svoje pot in gospod mu je naložil nas vseh krivice. Now the biblical definition of sin is to miss the intended mark. Svetopisanska definicija greha je da zgrešiš cilj. It's like you're shooting an arrow at a target but it doesn't quite reach, it falls short of the mark on the target. To je tako kot, če streljaš s puščico na tarčo, pa premalo streliš. So it's like we're aiming for the center of the target, but it doesn't quite go there. Se pravi, hoteli smo zadeti tarčo, da ne bi grešili, ampak puščica ni šla do tja. So here we're compared to sheep going our own way. Tukaj pa smo, pa smo sprimerja iz ovcam, ki zaidejo. It's like shooting an arrow that's been bent. It's never going to travel where you intend it to go. In tako kot upogljena puščica, ne bomo nikoli prišli tja, kamer bi morali priti. So this person that Isaiah 53 is talking about here, and we know that it's Jesus, he will carry that same sin, our iniquity, that we have committed, and he's going to do it for us. In ta oseba, o 
kateri beremo v pogledu 53 preroka Izaije in to je Jezus, bo nosila ta isti greh, nepravičnost, ki smo ga zagrašili in bo to zadela za nas. Now look at verse 7 of Isaiah 53. It says, He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was, a, he was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. In če beremo naprej sedmi vers, trim pjestega poglavaja, piše, Mučili so ga, a ponižal se je, in ni odprl ust svojih, kako reagne, ki ga pirejo za kol, in kako ravca, ki mu oči pred strišci svojimi, in ni odprl svojih ust. So this person that the prophecy is talking about is going to be like a lamb on its way to slaughter. Se pravi, ta oseba, o kateri govori, gre, bo, gre kot na za kol, kot jagne. But he's not going to protest, he's not even going to argue, he's not even going to open his mouth. Ampak ta oseba ne bo protestirala in ne bo niti odprla ust. And if you can remember from Matthew chapter 27, it says after receiving these threats and these beatings by the Pharisees, it says this in verse 12, but when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he gave no answer. In tako kot piše v Matejevem evangeliju v 27. poglad 12. vers, Potem, ko je bil udeležen Jezus grožnjem pred tepa farizejo, piše Matej, toda, ko so ga veliki duhovniki in starešine obtožili, ni dal nobenega odgovora. So, I hope you remember from, it's been a couple of months by now, but remember that ram that was substituted for Abraham's son Isaac? In mogoče, če se spomnite, ko smo pred par meseci govorili o ovnu, ki je kot žrtva na domestil, Abrahamovega sina Izaka. We saw how that ram was a picture of Jesus as well. Videli smo, da je bil tisti ovan tudi slika Jezusa. That ram, it was a sheep, it was slaughtered. Ta ovan, ali ovca, je bil zaklan. And we know where that happened. It happened on Mount Moriah, which is exactly where Jesus himself was sacrificed. There, in Jerusalem, on the same spot, in the same place, sacrificial way. In tisti oven je bil zaklan na isti gori morija, na kateri je bil žrtovan tudi Jezus, točno na tistem mestu v Jeruzalemu. We saw also about the Passover, that lamb that was slaughtered on Passover, as Jesus was also slaughtered during the time of Passover. In v velike noči, oziroma paši, kot se je temu reklo, je bilo na veliko noč zaklano jagne in tudi Jezus je bil umorjen v času paše. And I know I've mentioned this several times, but I'm going to say it again from John chapter 1 verse 29, when John the Baptist sees Jesus walking, he says, Look, it's the Lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world. In že več kot smo to rekli, ampak bomo še enkrat, Janez Krstnik, v prvom pogledu 21. vers, ko on vidi Jezusa, ki prihaja k njemu, reče, glej, jagne Bože, ki odjemlja grehe sveta. So, Jesus didn't struggle. He willingly submitted himself to death on the cross, just as the lamb is led to the slaughter. Torej, Jezus se ni boril, se ni upiral. On je šel prostovolno, se podredil smrti na križu, tako kot jagne vodijo v zakolj going to keep going in Isaiah chapter 53. Look at verse 8. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people, he was stricken. In če se vrnemo na 53. poglavi Izaije, 8. vers piše, Iztisken iz sodbe je bil vzet, a izmed njegovih Vrstnikov, kdo je pomislil, da je bil odrezan iz držele živečih zaradi prostopka ljudstva, mojega ga je zadev darac. So, the subject of this prophecy, I think it's very clear, it's the Savior, he would be cut off from the land of the living. Torej, subjekt tega 
piše da bo odrezan od držele živih. And this is exactly the same term that uh, the prophet Daniel used when he predicted what would happen to the Christ, the Messiah, after he was presented to Israel. In to je isti izraz, kot ga je pač uporabil Daniel, uh, ko je napovedal, kaj se bo zgodilo uh, iz uh, Kristusom, potem, ko bo predstavljen Izraelu kot njihov odrešnik. But here Isaiah is more specific. He goes into more detail that being cut off, cut off from the land of the living, which means he would die. Ampak Izaija še bolj podrobno uh, reče, da bo odrezan iz držele živih, kar pomeni, da bo umrl. So on that day that Jesus was crucified, he also died. He was literally cut off from the land of the living. He was no longer part of the land of the living. Torej, takrat, ko je bil Jezus križan, je tudi umrl, je bil odrezan od držele živih. Ni bil več del držele živih. And ironically, it was just a few days after he was presented as the Messiah, as he entered into Jerusalem riding on the donkey and everyone saying, Hosanna, Hosanna. In ironija je ta, da je bilo to samo nekaj dni potem, ko je Jezus prišel v Jeruzalem na, na Oslu in so se mu ljudi klanjali, Hosanna, Hosanna, da je prišel Mesija. We have to remember that Jesus did all of this because of us. Vedat moramo, da je Jezus vse to naredil za nas. So Colossians chapter 1 verse 21-22 says this, And you who were once alienated or, or separated and hostile in mind doing evil deeds, He has now reconciled in His body of flesh by His death in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before Him, before God. In tako tudi piše v pismu Kološanom v 21-22 verzu, ker piše, Tudi vi ste nekod živeli v hudobnih delih, v razumu odstojeni in sovražni. Zdaj pa vas je Bog spravil seboj po njegovem telešu iz mesa prek smrti, da bi vas privedal pred svoje obličje svete, brez grane in neoporečne. Now, I'm going to read verse 9 next, and it's, it has some very interesting things that we really need to catch here. Verse 9 says, And they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death, because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. In Bermo, uh, naprej Izaijo 53, da pogleda 9. vers, ker piše, In dali so mu grob pri brezbožnih, a pri bogatinu je bil pomočni smrti svoji, Zato, ker ni storil krivice in ni bilo živjače v ustih njegovih. So there's some very interesting things here about Jesus' burial that we're going to see. Tukaj piše kar nekaj zanimivih stvari o Jezusovem pokopu, ki jih bomo videli. Uh, even though he was sinless, he died with wicked men. We know that. Če prej bil brez greha, je umrl iz pokvarnimi ljudmi, to že vemo. But this verse says more than that. Ampak ta vers poveš še nekaj več. Says that his grave was appointed to be with wicked men, but he was with rich men in his death. Piše, da je bil njegov grob določen za hudobne ljudi, ampak je bil v svoji smrti z bogatašem ali bogatinom. And when we look at the original language that this is written in, written in Hebrew, um, the word wicked is used in a plural form. In če si pogledamo uh, v originalni, v originalni zapisu v hebrejskem, uh, te hudobne pokvarni ljudje je v množini. But the word rich in the second part of the verse is in a singular form. Beseda bogat, bogatin, pa je v drugem delu verza, pa je v hebrejščini v ednini. So we can say, why plural wicked, but singular rich? Uh, zakaj uporabijo za hudobne množino, za bogatega pa ednino? So, if we take a quick look at the Roman practice of crucifixion, that'll help answer this question. In če si pogledamo rimsko prakso križanja, bo to pomagal uh, odgovoriti na to vprašanje. So, Isaiah 53, and if you also, if you wanted to read Psalm 22, they're very graphic, prophetic descriptions of this method of execution, crucifixion. Tako, Izaija 53 poglavajo, kot tudi 22 psalm, sta 
slikovita preraška opisa te metode usmrtitve, se pravi križanja. The Romans borrowed this form of execution from the Carthaginians and then they even perfected it more into a gruesome, terrible act. Rimljani so vzeli to prakso križanja od kartežanov in se jo še izpopolnili v grozljivo umetnost. So people who were crucified by the Romans were stripped of their clothes in shame and disgrace. Uh, ljudi, ki so jih križali, so rimljani slek, slekali uh, v njihovo sramoto. Their, their hands and their feet had spikes driven through them to fix them to a cross. Uh, njihove roke, noge so bile prebodene žebli, da so jih, s katerim so jih fiksirali na križ. Sometimes their side was pierced so they would speed up their death. Včasih so jim prebodili tudi Bog, da so pospešili njihovo smrt. Now the amazing thing is that in the time of Isaiah and even when David wrote Psalm 22, crucifixion was not even known to be used as a form of execution among the Jewish people. Uh, zanimivo pa je, da v času Izaije in tudi takrat, ko je David napisal 22. psalm, uh, križanje med judi ni bilo znano kot metoda osmrtite. This form that is so clearly prophesied was not even used until hundreds of years later. To križnje, v katerem uh, so te prerogbe so se pojavile šele stoletja kasneje. We also know from Jewish tradition that they've always been very concerned about the barrier, bar- burial of their deceased loved ones. Za jude tudi vemo, da so bili vedno Zelo so skrbljeni glede pokopa njihovih ljubljenih oseb. So caring hands must take this body and wash it and anoint it and bury it in a proper tomb. Po judovski tradiciji morajo skrbne roke vzeti telo, ga umiti, pomaziliti in uh, pokopati v pravi grob. But if you were a victim of crucifixion, often you didn't receive these special privileges. Če pa si bil žrtev križanja, pa teh posebnih privilegijev nisi imel. They would simply take your body and cast it into a common grave with all the other crucified criminals. Vzeli so tvoje truplo in so ga vrgli v nek skupen grob, grobnico z ostalimi kriminalci. So we know there's an exception here in the case of Jesus. Vemo pa, da je tukaj v primeru Jezusa Prišlo do izjeme. The Bible tells us specifically that Joseph of Arimathea, as a secret believer in Jesus, interceded for the family and requested the body of Jesus. We see that in Luke 23. Uh, piše v Bibliji uh, Jožef iz Arimateje, ki je naskrivaj veroval v Jezusa in on je posredoval za družino in je prosil za njegovo telo, ker tudi piše v Luku v 23. poglavju. So Joseph of Arimathea's his loving hands took the body of Jesus down from the cross. He wrapped it and put him in his own tomb. That way fulfilling the prophecy of Isaiah 53 verse 9. Se pravi ta Jožef iz Arimateje, njegove skrbne roke so vzele Jezusovo truplo, pomazili ga je, ga zavil in ga spravo v primerno grobnico, tako da se je pač uresničila prerogba iz Izeje. So the prophecy of the Messiah, Jesus is literally going to fulfill both sides of this prediction by having been assigned a grave with the wicked and yet being buried in the place of the rich. In s tem je Jezus dobo sedem spolnil obe strani. Paradoksalno povedi, da bo Čeprav mu bo dodaljen grob z hudobnimi, bo v svoje smrti z bogatinom. Now look at uh, verse 10 of Isaiah 53. It says, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Torej beremo naprej deseti vers uh, 53. poglavja Izaije, kjer piše, Ali gospod ga je hotel streti, on ga je izračil v trpljenju. 
ko je zvršil duša njegove daritev za greh, bo vidil zarod, podaljšal od njih svoje in kar je gospodu povolji, bo uspevalo v roki njegovi. So, this whole cruel death was not a terrible accident or even something unexpected. Torej, to nam govori, da celotna ta kruta smrt ni bila neka strašna nasreča ali pa nekaj nepričakovanega. It was explicitly God's plan to bruise him. To bil izrecno gospodov načrt, da ga rani. Now, that can seem incredibly cruel and we can ask the question, why? To se sliš nevrjetno kruto in se sprašujemo, zakaj? You have to think back to the Old Testament sacrificial system. Remember when they used um, the offerings for sin, the lamb, so that the person giving the sacrifice would be held blameless. And here, the life of this servant is also, he's going to be an offering, but he's going to be an offering for our sin. Torej, tukaj se moramo spomenuti na ta star zavezni žrtvovalni sistem, kjer mora oseba oziroma biti neka žrtev, ki ni kriva, mora biti, mora nošiti greh za tistega, ki greši. In ta žrtev mora biti neoporečna in zato je tudi tukaj življenje tega sožabnika daritev za greh in za čega v greh. In so, when I say our sin, our sin, I'm talking about all of us who, as the prophecy said, have turned away and gone our own way, gone astray like the sheep. In zaprav za čega v greh? Za tiste, ki so se kot avce, ki so se ki so se odvrnili stran, ki so ki so ki so se zgubili. Isaiah is literally talking about me and you. Isaiah dobro sredno govori o meni in o tebi. Verse 11, now from Isaiah 53, it says, He, talking about God, shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Če beremo naprej, 11. vers 53. poglavja Izaija piše, Od nadloge duše svoje bo videl sad in se sitil, spoznavanjem svojem, bo pravični hlapac moje mnoge storil pravične in njih krivice bo naložil nase. And everything we've read up to this point has illustrated this death, this sacrificial death of a servant as being so cruel, but here it almost changes tone and becomes optimistic and even triumphant. In čeprav je vse, kar smo do zdaj prebrali, bilo kar nekoliko ugrožljivo, se tukaj spremeni ton in celo poglava postane optimistično, celo zmagoslavno. So this verse talks about the satisfaction that Jesus would feel after his death and resurrection, knowing that he had redeemed many people through his own sacrifice. Ta vers govori o zadovoljstvu, ki ga bo Jezus občutil po svoj smrti in ustajenju. Romans 3, verses 22 to 24, it says this, The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe, for there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by His grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ. V pismu Rimljanom, tretje poglavi, 24. vers piše, Božja pravičnost se daje poveri v Jezusa Kristusa in sicer vsem, ki verujejo. Ni namreč nobene razlike, se so vsi grešili in so brez Bože slave. O pravični pa so zaston po njegovi milosti prek odkupitve v Kristusu Jezusu. So, Jesus literally carried our sins and gave us an opportunity to be righteous before God through His death and also His resurrection. Se pravi, Jezus je Dobesedno nosil naše grehe in nas je svojo smrtjo in ustajenjem naredil za pravične pred Bogom. Now look at the last verse in Isaiah 53. Verse 12 says, Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And he bore the sin of many, and made intercession 
for the transgressors. Ще се приберем ще задни верс 12-ти пише. Зато му дам велика отделяш и да ли оба принес му горшни ми. Зато къде е жертвовал душа своя смърт и не бил грешником при щит. Он е мисъл грех много и им проси за грешника. So yes, Jesus died on the cross carrying our sin. Торе я. Иисус е умърл на крижо и не носи наш грех. Yes, he did pour out his soul as he was dying. Рис е излил своя душа, кой е умърл. Yes, he was numbered with transgressors. We know he was crucified between two thieves. Бил е прищит мед престъпника. Вие има къде е бил крижен мед двима татовама. And his death was the payment. It fulfilled the payment that was required by God for the sins of all of humanity. И негова смърт е била плачила, ки га е Бог захтева за греха човечества. We couldn't pay the debt that we owe. So God made a way for us by the death of his sinless son. Ми не сме могли плачат долга, ки га имамо. Зато нам е Бог наредил под смъртя своя през грешнага сина. So that finishes Isaiah 53 and I hope that you've seen the many pictures of Jesus here, the Christ, as the subject of this prophecy, as we've seen over and over again. С тем се заключи трим пиеста в поглавие пререка Изаия и упам да сте видели ще видели слики Иезуса Христоса като субъекта ти пререк бе видно знава. I think it's so clear that it can't leave any doubt in any of our minds exactly who it is talking about. Мислен да е тако ясно да не морам мит на бених двома о ком пререк говори. But I can't get away from this passage Without talking about how it affected the Ethiopian eunuch. Ampak ne morem pa it naprej od tistega, ko je Filip govoril za etiopskemu eunuchu. Did Philip's words help the Ethiopian eunuch at all? A so Filipove besede etiopsu kaj pomagale. So we're going to go back to Acts chapter 8 to see very quickly. I'm going to read uh, verses 36 and 37. It says, Now as they went down the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, See, look, here is water. What does stop me? What hinders me from being baptized? Then Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. The, the, the eunuch's answer is, I believe that Jesus Christ is is the Son of God. Трябва, че се чисто накратко върнамо у апостолска дела, ко Филип говори за Еунухом, 36 и 37 версо 8-го поглавя, пише, Ко се па тако пирете по цести, придете хводи, и комърник рече, глед вода, кай брани, да би бил кършчен? Филип па рече, че веруеш, за сега срца смеш. И Еунух отговори и рече, Верувам да е Језус Христос син Божи. So, what was the point that Philip was trying to make to the eunuch here? Кај е бил на мен, ки га е Филип поскушал да поведате в нуху? His point was that Jesus was the one who the prophet was talking about. На мен е бил тем, да е бил Језус тисти, о катера ми е говорил пререк и за ја. Then immediately we see the eunuch's response is his desire to identify with this message of Jesus by being baptized. And that proves that he believed it. And he asks if he could be baptized himself. In tako vidimo ta evnuho odgovor, da se je poistovetil s tem sporočilom o Jezusu Kristusu in si je zaželel biti krščan. So this is one of the things that baptism is. It's identification or agreement with the message that is being spoken by the preacher. If you remember, John the Baptist had a message of repentance. Заправо, то е една от тех ствари, ки го кръст помени, поистоветене, а па стринене с поручилам, ки го говорил преди гарен, че се спомните, Иоанна си ме е споручила Кесаня. And he challenged those who heard them to ask for forgiveness of their sins against God. И Иоанна си е зива от тисте, ки са слишал да просил за отпощане своя грехов против Богу. 
And in the days of John the Baptist, if you yourself made a conscious decision to repent of your sins, you publicly proclaimed that by being baptized. In the case of Jan, Krstnika, that si se sam zavisno odločil da se pokasaš svoje grehov, si to javno razglasil iz krstom. So Philip asks him directly, if you believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the one who died for your sins, then you can be baptized. In Philip ga ne unuha, ne posredno vpraša, če verjamaš, da je Jezus Mesija tisti, ki jo moraš za tvoje grehe, potem si lahko krščan. And the response of the eunuch is beautiful and it confirms his belief in Jesus when he says, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. In ta odgovor, ki ga unuha je krasen in potrjuje njegove vero v Jezusa, s tem, ko reče, verjamem, da je Jezus Kristus Božji Sin. So here we see what happened in verses 38 and 39. He commanded the chariot to stand still and both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and he baptized him. Now when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away so that the eunuch saw him no more and he went on his way rejoicing. In tukaj vidimo potem v 38-39 verzu, kaj se zgodi, piše, eno kaže, ustaviti voz in oba stopita v vodo, Filip in komornik in ga krsti. Ko postopita iz vode, vzame duh gospodov Filipa in ni ga več videl komornik, zakaj nadlival je vesel svoj pot. So here we see exactly what baptism looks like, just like it was when John the Baptist was baptizing. Tukaj vidimo natančno, kako krst zgleda, točno tako, kot je krstil Janas Krstnik. They both went down into the water so that the person who is being baptized could be taken wholly into the water. Oba sta šla v vodo, zato da ta oseba, ki bila kršna, je šla lahko popolnoma v vodo. And this is the other picture of baptism, that of the death, burial and resurrection. In to je druga slika krsta, ta smrt, pokop in vstajanje. So, I've got some verses here that talk more about baptism, but I'm just going to move on and say baptism it's not a part of becoming a child of God. It is something that a child of God should do after they make their own decision to trust in Christ. Krst, torej ni del tega, da postaneš Božji otrok, ampak je nekaj, kar bi moral Božji otrok narediti, ko se odloči. So, any so-called baptism, a person who can't make a decision for themselves, is not the pattern that we see in the Bible at all. Vsak tako imenovani krst osebe, ki se sama ne more odločiti, ni vzorec, ki ga vidimo v svetmu pisu. It's a practice made up by men and traditions forced upon people by fear. In to je praksa, ki se jo stvari ljudje in tradicije in jo je ljudjem usiril strah. But that's not the point of the message today. The point of the message is the prophecy recorded in Isaiah 53, 750 years before Jesus was even born, is a perfect picture of Him giving Himself as a sacrifice for us. Ampak krst ni bistvo današnjega sporočila. Bistvo današnjega sporočila je prerogba, ki je bila zapisana v Izaiju v 53. poglavi v 750 let preden, je bil Jezus sploh rojen in je popolna podoba tega, kako se Jezus daruje kot žrtva za nas. Then I hope we see that I'm not the only one interested in making the connection between the pictures and prophecies of the Old Testament with the fulfillment that we find in Jesus. Upava, da ni sva edina, ki ju zanima povezovane slik in prerok iz stare zaveze, iz dopolnitvijo teh slik v novi zavezi skozi Jezusa. So Philip was obedient to God's leading in his life when asked, he clearly explained to the Ethiopian eunuch. Torej, Filip je bil v svojem življenju poslušan Bogu in ko je bil naprošen, je to jasno razložil etiopskemu eunuhu. And even though the Ethiopian was a religious man, he didn't understand the plan of God to save all of humanity. Čeprav je bil etiopijac veran, pa ni razumel Božega načrta, po katerem hoče Bog rešiti celotno človeštvo. Didn't understand it would only come through Jesus Christ, but once he did understand it, 
It changed his life in a way that religion never could. And he went on his way with joy, real joy. Кој е етиопиец разумел да приде решител само по Језусу Христосу е тоа спремнило негово на жулиене на начин ки го религија никола не могла и не своја пот лако надлевал и справен веселем. So that might be someone else's situation, trying to find joy through religion and then finding that it's not working. Могоче тоа ше. Ситуација кога ти се знаеше од друг, поскуште најти веселе скузи религија, ампак тоа не бодел вало. You need to understand that it comes through Jesus Christ and Him alone. Разумет морате да веселе прихаја само скузи Језус за Христоса. It's not baptism that makes someone a child of God. Ни крст тисти ки никога не ради за Божјега отрока. It's not praying to a saint or confessing your sins to a priest. Ni molito al pa spod grijo. Simply believing, accepting what Jesus has already done for you. Samo vrijeti in spreti kar je Jezus Kristo že nadil za nas. So if you're already a child of God, are you being obedient to His leading? Če ste poslušni njegovom vodstvu, a Upoštevate to, kako vas vodi Bog. We saw that God knew the exact timing when Philip needed to be at that certain place, certain time to meet the certain guy and exactly know what Philip could show him about what he was reading. Tukaj smo, v tej zgodbi smo videli, da je Bog vedel točen čas, ko je moral Filip biti ob točno določenem času, na točno določenem mesto, da je srežal točno določenega človeka, ki je rabil Točno to, kar mu je Filip lahko pokazal tem, kar je bral. So, here's the question for all of us who are, consider ourselves children of God. Are we seeking people that we can guide? In to je vprašanje za nas, ki smo že Bože trosi, ali iščemo ljudi, ki jih lahko vodimo? Are we trying to help others by explaining God's plan for having a relationship with Him to anyone? Poskušamo pomagati ljudem s tem, da jim poskušamo pojasniti, kako splest ves iz Bogom. Let's all do our very best to be obedient. Poskušamo narediti najboljše, da bomo poslušni. So, that's going to wrap up the message for today. I do want to say, if anyone has any questions, about anything that we talked about, please feel free to message. We're going to discuss the message here today. Uh, it's been good to uh, be with you today. S tem bomo zaključili današnje sporočilo, če ima kdorkoli kakšno vprašanje za te, ki nas gledate preko interneta, nas kontaktirajte in upamo, da se bomo malo spet videli. So until next time, thank you. Do naslednjič, hvala lepa.